Hey, it's Mosquito, also known as Chris. Welcome to the shop. Today we're going to build a Bluetooth speaker. And just a fair warning, this is a very old version of my shop. And I kind of screw up this first part. So if you just want to skip to the part where I fix the mistakes and continue on from basically a new start, then uh, check the description and there'll be a link to that where the actual thing starts. But if you want to watch me screw it up, well, that's this. <laughs> so I think we're just going to roll some music and we can uh, get a little bit of background on this. So this was the point at which I realized I'm not very good at this. <laughs> so I have the miter gauge, I have the blade tilted to 45. Things aren't quite square and I just wasn't very happy with the results. At this point, I wasn't very far into my woodworking life, so I was fairly new to using the table saw, fairly new to all that stuff. I was mostly not that comfortable with it, so back to the drawing board, and we're going to design something else. I was originally following some plans from Kirby Beats Audio, and it was kind of a, just a mitered box with a speaker set in it, and well... I guess we decided to change designs when my miters weren't working out as, as much as I'd like. So this was one of the revisions, and I kind of just kept tweaking the design until I came up with something that A, I was happy with, and B, I thought I could actually build with the tools and the skills that I had. That would be this. And the design is to be able to both stand up or lay horizontal, and the original plans were just horizontal, so this is the new plan, and well, let's go for it. So this is the parts list, and well, bear in mind, these were seven years ago, like 2017 parts, 2017 prices, so keep that in mind, but stick around at the end and I'll kind of walk through all of them and, and just kind of mention where they went and what I used them for. So like I said, I was getting back to things that I was good at. And at this point, what I was good at was hand tools. So cleaned up all the old joinery on the table saw in the shop, and now I'm just shooting all those ends straight and square. So getting things ready, hitting it with a Stanley 45 to make some rabbits. And I actually make quite a few rabbits because that's, well, easy with hand tools. So that's what I did here. Basically cut a rabbit on the front, and then I cut a rabbit on the back. This one is a really wide rabbit. I started out as a groove because I didn't want to do the whole thing by 45. And then I use a couple of hand planes to just work it down to get that section that I missed into a really wide rabbit. And this is actually going to be on the front. After that, what I ended up doing is trimming things down to the actual sizes they needed to be. When I cut them all on the table saw, basically all I did was just kind of cut off those miters that I didn't need anymore. And then now I'm cutting things to the actual size. Here I'm making a rabbit across the end. So I just cut the end grain and now I'm just coming in with a chisel and kind of ripping all that out. And then follow that up after I kind of rough it in with the chisel with the, the uh, router plane just to kind of make it a nice even depth to match the other rabbits.
The next thing here was I had to cut a dado that basically matched the one on the end. So this one I cut with both sides and then basically knock out the end of that with a chisel just to make this the exit side. And then I put a batten on the side and I'm actually using a Stanley number 46 to cut the actual dado itself. And then once that's all the way down and fully cut to depth, then I come back in with the router plane just like before, same setting, so everything matches and just make sure that's all cleaned up. Then I had a rabbit across the whole front to do, and since this is a stopped rabbit, well, I just go at it with a chisel. <laughs> this takes a while, but it gets the job done. So basically I just marched all the way across the thing and then cleaned it up with the router plane, different router plane, because why not? <laughs> And then we just go to town and smooth everything out to clean everything, level it all out, make it nice and smooth, get rid of any milling marks, any registration marks, anything that I had marked on there with a pencil, whatever, get it all nice and cleaned up and then do a quick little test fit and get everything all nice and assembled. So this is the main box pretty much as it's gonna be. Then I had a little bit of cleaning up to do because those other pieces were a little bit long. So I'm here, what I'm doing is cutting out a pair of tenons and I cut off the front, cut off the back, and then I'm just cutting out that waste piece in the middle. And then I have a couple of mortises to cut in that long piece. So these are obviously gonna be through tenons. And the idea here is that these will act as the feet when it is in the horizontal position. So those go all the way through. And this is the main case. Uh, I still have a bottom to put on it, but looking pretty good at this point. Then it was back out to the shop to get the first part of the main box glued up. And then once I do that, we're going to mark out where I have a crossover and, well, two crossovers, I guess, technically. And getting those marked out where I put those threaded inserts, I just had the standoffs pre-installed and then I just used the screw and the screwdriver to hit that to mark where I need those threaded inserts. Good trick to get everything nice and aligned. And then we go to glue the top panel on, or the side panel, depending on the orientation of the speaker. Now we move on to processing the front. So jointing a piece of curly maple that I had and getting that nice and straight and flat. And then I come back to the bench, clean it all up. You may have noticed, I moved the bench out to the shop now. It took a little while to do this part, but just getting that all nice and smooth and cleaned up and. Man, I love hand planes. <laughs> this part was a little sketchy, not gonna lie. So that's a big hole saw the size of the speaker needs and just threw it in the drill press and went to town. And it's a carbide tipped one, so it's not just the bimetal, but that's a big hole and a big cutter. <laughs> I was happy the small one could use a Forstner. Now I've got the overarm pin router with a rabbiting bit and I'm just cutting a recess around the front where the speaker will be inset so that they don't sit out in front of it. And then I'm just drilling a bunch of the mounting holes to actually get those speakers held in place. Then I just used some ebony stain, some dark, dark stain on this oak, just because that was the aesthetic I was looking for, as you could see from those previous renders, but just getting it stained up and then getting some finish applied shortly after. Now I'm working on the back panel. And so this has two ports. That's the, the design. I, again, I didn't make the design, I just, following the directions. And then this is actually a cutout for what will be basically a control panel. So I'm just cutting out a square here on my old scroll saw. I don't know why, because I have a new one, but <laughs> why not? And then this is that control panel. I'm just drilling some holes. There's gonna be some LEDs, some switches, uh, volume knob, power connector, that kind of stuff. So just making all those holes in this, making it the right size, and basically this is what it looks like. So we're gonna pause here quick. So what we're looking at here is top left is the power switch. The bottom left is an aux input. Obviously the center left, we've got the volume knob. And then the next over from that is the power input. And then there's three LEDs, one for Bluetooth, one for power, and one for charging, though I don't actually have batteries in it, so that one doesn't really matter but then the upper two things on the outsides of that plate are the ports for venting the speakers and they don't make this specific one but this is a dayton audio uh tool channel 30 watt bluetooth amplifier board that drives everything getting some finish applied on the front so i'm just using some armor seal on that curly maple front and it sure makes that pop something nice 
and then just also applying some polyurethane to everything else and getting the speakers installed after that. I inserted that little red strip of paduke to give it a little bit of an accent, but now we just install some acoustic foam inside wherever there's space. And this is the actual audio from the actual speaker recorded with a Blue Yeti mic. Same one I'm recording with right now, but hard to tell through YouTube, but it actually sounds really good. Hey, so here's the parts list. I'll let you look through that on your own. 188, roughly, plus shipping about 195-ish. 2017 prices, so things might be a little bit different now. I know you can get a much more professionally designed and made and probably compact and probably even better sounding Bluetooth speaker with a battery and charging and blah, blah, blah. Not the point. The point is, I like the way mine looks. It sounds pretty good and I wanted to make one. So I did do a deep dive on this. It ended up being like 10 minutes. So if you're interested in that, you can either find the link somewhere down there in the description or up here, you can uh, check out the card and I'll link to that video just in case you're actually interested in it. I just basically run through all these parts. So if you really want to pause, and you can kind of use your imagination or if you know speakers, you can kind of figure out based on what the components are and how many of them there are, where they were in the build. But I'll post that deep dive for anybody that's actually interested, just in case you need help falling asleep tonight. And <laughs> otherwise, I will catch you in the next one.